You're listening to Paisal, a true rom-com. Paisal, a true rom-com season two. You're still trying to do that? Yes. You do realize the, the, the thing you do at the beginning is basically the jingle. Yeah, but I want to put a bit more ingle in my jingle. What's an ingle? I don't know, but I couldn't think of anything on short notice. Now I regret everything. Good morning and welcome. Or, well, okay, it's morning for us as we're recording this, but you may not be listening in the morning. So good morning, good day, good afternoon, good evening. You made that reference much longer than you should have been. Yes, well. Um, why does the cabinet have an energy rating? Jessel has just pointed out that there's an energy rating sticker on one of our cupboards or bookshelves. So from there? It's from my new monitor that I got to make it easier to work from home. We had unexpected floods that stopped me from getting to work this week. It's very difficult for me to do my work on a small laptop monitor. I was in the same situation. Yeah. I'm lucky enough that I think I get to go back to work tomorrow, back to the office tomorrow, I mean, although I will find out this evening. But Jessel... Uh, TBD. TBD. Most probably by the end of March. So the timing of this episode is quite interesting because where we're up to in the journey of our relationship is March 2020, when locally we had our first pandemic-related lockdown. And we had lived together for about a month, month and a bit. Yeah, I guess we were out of, we were on a holiday for a bit. We had just in the past month seen your parents face to face and we've not seen them since. Not face to face? No. Sorry, sorry, in in person. Oh, it's so complicated using the right language for stuff these days because, you know, over a video call, that's face to face, but it's not in person. But I mean, the person's there digitally. IRL, I guess, but they're there in real life. Oh, you never know. It could be the Matrix. We'll never know. No. I'm sorry, but if this is the Matrix, I don't want to wake up. (laughs) You've got nothing to say to that? No? Yeah. Yeah. It just means you're content with what you have. Yeah. Well, you know, we're renting at the moment and I think we'll be renting for a bit longer. But, you know, I do have ideas about the few changes I want to our life. I think we're heading in the right direction. I guess so, yeah. Are you going to be this silent for the entire episode? I don't know what you're talking about. How's that different to any other time? Wait, so you're saying I'm I'm more quiet than normal? Yes. So I should speak more like now? Yes. But we haven't started the podcast. No, this is the podcast. No, we just introduced where we're up to. Yeah, that's true. So for this episode, we are focusing on approximately March 2020. Do we have the book yet? Oh, the book's somewhere. I don't think we need to rely on the book today. I guess you have the guy uh, framework of what we're going to talk about. Yeah, it's okay. in my head. Cool. At least one of us does. Well, it helps when you do. I don't really need to know. I just contribute. You know, that just makes me think that you're much better at being spontaneous and improvising. Nope. Just like annoying you. That is so true. Do you remember, Jessel, the first week when we both had to work from home? I remember I started working from home right on year end. Uh, For me, it was the end of March, I think, last week of March, and then from then on. So it was quite hectic and very different because I'd never worked from home before. Can you give the audience some context by explaining what year end means? I'm an accountant, so we base our accounts on a monthly basis. So every end of the month, we have to close our accounts and start our reporting and all that stuff. The year end is basically where the timetable is a bit more squished than normal. So it's not a normal month end. Um, We have like auditors reporting and stuff like that. So it's just a bit more hectic. We're coming up to that time again. Yes. So hopefully I'll be back in the office. If not, then it's going to be another one at work, uh, at home. We've both had a slightly different experience of working from home. I love it in some ways. I like the quiet. I like that I have so much more control over my environment, which just means that I can choose my optimum lighting. I can't do that in the office because I'm part of a team. So it's got to be what suits the team. 
Whereas at home, I can set it up exactly, you know, if it's too dark, I don't like that. But if it's too bright, I end up with headaches. But then with sound as well and being able to focus, aside from Jessel being really annoying when he's working from home with me. Not the whole day. Not annoying the whole day. No, just every now and then. In the office, I find it incredibly annoying when people interrupt me if I'm focusing on something. That's just something that has to happen when I'm in the office. Whereas when I'm working from home, although I do get messages, it's not the same because I can sort of, I can see the message pop up, but it's purely a little visual thing. I can close up what I'm doing and then go to the message. Whereas in person, if people come up to your desk in person, they interrupt. And from that moment, you know, they've already pulled you out of it. They already have your attention. They want your attention. And there's something that they want from you. And they usually won't go away until they get what they want from you. I guess you can say, give me, give me half an hour or something. No. Oh, but your your work is a bit different. Yeah, that's another thing about my day job, I guess, is that the majority of my role exists to provide assistance with problems as they arise. A lot of that requires me to be physically in the space. So something that was very difficult for me working from home in the beginning was a substantial percentage of my work just was not there because I was not in the office, some of that got replaced with other other work that I guess for me wasn't as time consuming, like organising online tutorials. That was just more time consuming with surgeons who had difficulty doing a tutorial over video conference. And on occasion, I had to sit through the entire tutorial. But overall, I really loved the experience of just being at home how did you feel about working from home? I see good things and bad things. I've heard people who end up working more longer hours because they're already at home. There's no separation um, where you can just go, okay, I'm, I'm leaving work. No, no, I can stop thinking about work. But I guess for some people, the, the commute. commute to work is annoying, um, whereas ours is a bit more straightforward. So that's not that much of a uh, problem. The only time I would say I don't want to commute would be if it's raining. I'd, I'd be happy to stay home. Uh, when we started working from home, I think I ended up working a bit longer than normal because there was no commute. Now that I have a desk, it's a bit more comfortable. Working off the kitchen table wasn't the best option, but that was the only thing we had. And it was very difficult to get office furniture and monitors and stuff initially when the lockdown happened. We got our chairs, what, I have no idea, in August or something? I felt like it was a few months in. So we were probably one of the last people. I mean, people are still getting office chairs, but not for lockdowns. Yeah, I guess that that is where we had a slight added difficulty or complication where we had just moved into a place and we had only purchased what we felt we needed, which meant that we didn't have any home office and we definitely didn't have a home office for two, it, it took a little bit of effort to find out how that could work for us in an apartment where we were both in the same room. At different times, we had vastly different workloads and different work hours as well. Something that I really like to do in some of my downtime is watch TV shows and movies. I did that quite a bit and I think it distracted Jessel a little bit. I mean, it still does. So I um, have to wear like headphones and stuff. Now it's a bit easier to not watch. Well, the thing was when I was on the kitchen table, I was the, the TVs in the line of sight. So it's very easy to get distracted. But now I'm facing the other way. So it's okay. Yeah, it was quite funny that I was pretty much in your line of sight all day. You were either watching me at my work desk, like not actively watching, but I was in your line of sight. No. Or the monitor would be in the way for that. I would have to go side to the side and see you. Now you are. Well, you'd be in my line of sight if you were sitting on the couch before. So little by little, we've made little little changes to to the home environment to enable two separate workspaces, which has become important when we're both on a call at the same time, which has happened quite a bit. 
Yes. Being who I am, one of the very first things that I did with my free time when we started to have to work from home was I did a course on work-life balance when you're working from home. That gave me some tips on, uh, for example, visual signals. So, for example, in my little workspace at the start of my workday, I would turn on the light and at the end of the workday, I would turn off the light. And that was a, a visual thing for me that my workday has started. This is now a workspace or my workday has ended. I'm now at home. You don't use the light anymore, do you? I don't use that light anymore because it's too bright. I have lots of little lamps. Do you still have the other one? A few little lamps. Yeah, it's under here somewhere. The one with the clock that doesn't turn out. Oh, yeah. And I don't know if they put much of this on board, but I did do a little training session with my team about creating those healthy boundaries for working from home. And a, a big thing also is to schedule in lunch breaks and a start and end of day if you have a tendency to just work through because you're just there by yourself. You don't have that. I don't know. The day is just a bit different when you're working from home. There's no indicators or? Yeah. Like if you're in the office, maybe people will say, oh, I'm going to lunch. And just that little thing might be a trigger for you to be like, oh, yeah, I need to take a lunch as well. I'm very strict about making sure I take a lunch break. Partly that is for mental health reasons. I find it very important, but also I'm not paid for my lunch break. That's unpaid time, so I'm not going to work it. I mean, my lunch breaks are sort of around one hour. I like to take that whole hour, regardless if I'm at the office or here. Because that's, I like my own, like I can do whatever I want in that hour. So normally at work, I would normally take um, the handheld video game thing and just play that after eating lunch. And here I can sit down. Uh, well, if you're here, then no. If we have I lunch still... at the same time, we'll usually watch something together. Yeah. But if we have lunch at a different time, which happens because we have to work around video calls and stuff for work, you'll play video games then sometimes. Yeah. So I really loved not having to leave the apartment initially. We were having afternoon tea most days. Yeah, we were having afternoon tea most days together on the balcony. That was really lovely. We had the rainbow cake that we used to get. Something, though, that I guess I didn't appreciate enough at the time is that there are certain calming activities that I need to do. If I don't do them, kind of lets my underlying anxiety rise up to undesirable levels and that just tends to mean that things that trigger complex trauma response are more sensitive are more sensitive to, to stuff when when my baseline anxiety is higher and one of those things is walking I walk a lot yes for most of my life I've walked a lot and I think I've done it mostly without really thinking about it I know that I feel better after a walk usually because I take public transport. There's always a walk to public transport and then a walk from public transport. So there's lots of little walks that I get throughout throughout my regular days when I have a commute. Yeah, I, I get that 15-minute um, walk as well going to work. When that was just overnight taken away, that was quite difficult because... I didn't really think about the fact that just overnight I was going from a healthy amount of walking that was very helpful for me to like not really walking at all and just walking around a, an apartment, which, you know, could be like seven to 8,000 steps less a day. Probably more. That started to take a toll on me and I had a few meltdowns early on and really had no idea what was going on. I think, I think it was quite complex because partly there was the walking that I was no longer getting. So I think I had like a lot of probably built up energy that I wasn't getting rid of, but also I was extremely anxious in the early days about this virus that we didn't know that much about that was killing people. And as someone who has a lot of health issues, I was scared that if I got it, I would be one of those people who would die from it. So there was a lot of anxiety about that. 
then there was also anxiety about all the extra work complications, but also the worry that as I worked for a university that got a lot of income from international students who were no longer able to come to Australia to study, I was scared for the first time about, for the first time in a long time about um, losing employment. That was quite scary. And then at the time I was also on the board of a youth service and I was struggling with the the difference between wanting to help and having personal limitations. And that that is something that I've struggled a lot with. Any of my volunteer work is that desire to help, but not physically and mentally always being able to achieve that in the way that I thought I should be contributing. And I finally, I feel now that I'm in a place where I've found a way that I can contribute without wearing myself down. Sorry, I've just been talking and talking and talking. I'm going to have to have some of Jess's water. I was going to say with the work from home thing, um, having having no choice in the matter, whereas having to work full time from, from home rather than having the option of work going to the office and then one or two days from, from home, that's not good. You should have a change in environment. For me, it's very similar to how studying in university or high, uh, in university was it's very difficult for me to study at home where it's very easy to pro- procrastinate so even when i'm at home it's very easy to get distracted at work it's less so that got worse the more i was working from home i think there are certain personalities that are better at working from home but i think for anyone it makes sense that it would become more difficult the more time passes as just your work and your home is that same space and all those lines get blurred. Boundaries, I think, are very difficult to maintain and having a physically separate space for work makes that easier. Like in that show you're watching. Oh, my gosh. I'm watching a show called Severance. I'm in the fourth episode at the moment and essentially the concept is... These people have consented to have a medical procedure where they have, they split themselves in two based on location. So there's this elevator to work or to to their floor where they work. When they go up and the elevator opens, it's like a separate person that is there working. And then when they leave and they go down in that elevator, that part of themselves sort of deactivates and the personal part of them activates. It's a very interesting concept of having a work self and a home self, but as two separate people. So essentially the work person is only ever working. They just constantly in a work day, they have the physical rest. So they, they call them innies and outies, which is hilarious. So the outies are the personal life, you know, they're going home, they're sleeping, they're doing leisure activities, but the work person is just there all the time. They just, they work, they go to the elevator, and then all they know is that, oh, they're at the elevator again and starting the work day. I feel like I spoke a bit too long about that. I think that's a good premise. Hmm. A very interesting one. But, um, yeah, there's always something sinister to make the show more engaging. It was all, uh, what do you call it, Ro- something in roses? Sunshine and roses? Yeah, yeah. something like that. Then it wouldn't be too interesting. Well, yeah, it's been interesting actually on that note. I had previously watched a lot of very dark content, things like American Horror Story that are very tense a lot of the time, oftentimes ridiculous as well, but lots of intense shows and movies and something that I found during that initial period of being in lockdown, working from home, being home at home was... Being what? Home at home. What does that mean? I don't know. Okay. I thought, was that a flub or was that, was that what you meant to say? I meant to say that, that I appreciate, but it's not really a thing to say home at home. I was just saying that I'm at I was at home all the time. Oh, okay. I started to want to watch more amusing things and 
yeah, less less things that were dark and gritty. I wanted to watch things that made me feel lighter and happier, made me laugh. I discovered Round the Twist. Again. Well, I discovered that it was on YouTube. So there was a Australian television channel that they sort of cycle through old Australian TV shows. And now it's on Netflix. Yeah. So I introduced Jess Sorter around the twist. I knew about it. That would have been like when I was in grade three, four, five, something like that. But yeah, I remember some of it, but there was maybe like two or three episodes that I only remember. I was obsessed with Round the Twist when I was a teenager and I recorded every episode on VHS and I designed my own VHS covers. That was just one of the little things I liked to do. I don't know if I did covers for anything else aside from Round the Twist. The the way I did it was there were like different books and things about Round the Twist and some of the artwork I preferred to the artwork that they used for the actual the actual VHSs that they sold. It wasn't photos, it was artwork. Some of it was artwork. There was, I think they only came out with one issue, but they did a comic or graphic novel of Round the Twist. It was definitely the Nails episode, the merman one. I can't remember. Basically, Linda falls in love with a mermaid. Oh, right, yes. The one where he starts to grow uh, scales or something. Yeah, they did that one. And the pink bow tie one, there's the boat and they're like going side to side and they make people vomit. And there's the, the I don't know if it's the bow tie that does it. I think that's just like a visual thing to say that it's him at the end. But there's like a machine that turns back your age. So it's not not like turning back time, but it's turning back time for you. So it was I think these criminals were using it to get away with stuff because they'd, you know, commit a crime and then they would, like, go back in time a bit. So it would change the way they looked. I can't remember that. Anyway, I think just those two stories were in this first issue of the Rama Twist comic and I don't think it was popular. I would have bought them all. But um, they need more than one person as a target audience. Yeah, yeah. Even though you, you were their target, like, Based, not really target audience, but you li- love the show, so you were their target audience. The first two seasons were pretty fun. Or fun. Yeah, the first two seasons I love, and the theme song is really good. Very um, it's a earwormy. Earwormy. Who doesn't love a good earworm? Mm. And we started watching Spellbinder. Yeah, that wasn't for me. I saw a bit, but then you know, did we f- we watched the whole season one, right? I watched it while you were working. Season one wasn't as annoying as the season two. The season two, I one ended up on. stopping season two. Season two was the one where I was like, yeah, I need to distract myself from this, that distraction. It was was not good. It didn't hold up. So that was another 90s show that I loved. I don't know if this was like a 90s thing, but there were novelizations of all these TV shows. So you wouldn't normally novelize a TV show, would you? I think it was done quite a bit in the 90s. So Spellbinder, both seasons were novelized. I had both of those. Mirror, Mirror, which was another one. I had the novel of that. Secret Life of Alex Mack. I, I wouldn't say they novelized that. They created novels with that character and I read all of those as well. I love Secret Life of Alex Mack and I've not actually been able to find that but I don't know if I would want to go back and watch it. Is that the one where the person can turn into stuff? In the first episode she gets exposed to a toxic sludge and it gives her some special abilities so she can zap things so like she'll zap a light switch and it turns the light on or off but she also can morph into a little puddle, which means that she can morph down into that and go under doors to, you know, get around that sort of thing. The main conflict of the series is the company responsible for that toxic sludge know that someone's been exposed to it and they want to keep their secret that they weren't supposed to have that sludge and it's you know, the typical, ooh, it's an evil science firm doing evil science <laughs> with questionable ethics. There's this added layer of her dad actually works for that company. 
So just so nice, complex situation. Trees. That's not a tree so You know that from the beginning. Oh, okay. But, yeah, that comes into play every now and then in the story. And the other show that I really loved was Ocean Girl, and I don't want to go back and watch that because I feel like it would probably ruin my childhood memory. I don't know, maybe. I haven't seen that one. Did we watch the trailer for that? I'm not sure. Bronson from season two of Round the Twist was in it. And he's a film director now. He directed a film called Ali's Wedding. That sounds familiar. One of the characters pretends to have graduated from med school, but they actually dropped out. And it's there's a lot about family and culture and shame. It's it's quite quite interesting. But then also Linda from season two is in season four of Ocean Girl. Also, oh, I can't remember. Kathy from season two of Spellbinder is also um, in the latest seasons of Ocean Girl as Neri's sister. Yes, no, 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 no context. So it was just this exciting mix of, you know, all these actors that were in shows that I liked all sort of coming together. Like in the Avengers. The, by the final episode, uh, final season of Ocean Gold. No, not like Avengers because that's characters, not actors. Can we do that? No, it's the same thing. No. Yeah. No. There's no Infinity Rings, but no Infinity Stones. But, you know, there were, in the final season, there were these pieces of some orb and there was an ankh. Um, the what? Ankh, the Are you Egyptians. trying to say No, no, it's not Avatar. What's an ankh? It's a an Egyptian symbol, maybe a hieroglyph, uh, which is, it's like a circle and a line, a horizontal line, and then vertical line. Maybe it's a triangle underneath. I can't remember. Anyway, but I don't even understand the point of having that in there. But So in terms of our relationship, do you think that was affected at all? by living and working together in the same space. I don't know. Yeah, I guess there was, we know now we can do that. But uh, when did you start seeing your psychologist and stuff after the, or before um, the pandemic? After my mental health had been funny for a little bit. Someone I cared about started having severe mental health issues that kind of gave me a glimpse into the future and that mixed with also being with you and caring about the impact that my mental health concerns had on you, that was like, yeah, I need to go see someone. Yeah, because the working from home, well, the the lockdown stuff was the trigger for some things and we did have a discussion about it, didn't we? We had a few discussions. I'm pretty sure I asked you why, as in why not? Why not go see someone? And initially, I I found an online alternative to start with. Oh yeah, because there's a, a wait list. Even back then, there was quite quite a wait list. To give some perspective, though, I think at the time it was like a six month waiting list. Whereas for the specific person I'm thinking of, it's now an eighteen month waiting list. Yeah, we really don't have enough mental health professionals at the moment yeah so if if that hadn't happened it would have caused quite a bit of an issue i guess i don't think we would have been able to i don't know spend that much time without something happening yeah because i I don't have any problems spending time with you like working from home or doing whatever i love spending time with you oh really yeah i never knew that i thought you were just hanging around for no reason i remember at the time thinking that Our train trip on the Indian Pacific was excellent experience in terms of for that, was it nine days? Maybe 10 days, but nine nights. That entire time we were just around each other 24-7. Less than half of it was without phone reception. Yeah. So we had had a little taster of what it was like to spend all that time together. Also... um... I stuffed up the the, the laptop that I had brought, <gasps> so we had nothing to watch on that. <laughs> that was so annoying. <laughs> Jessel had downloaded some shows for us to watch on the laptop and then left the laptop on unplugged during yeah, an update, I think. Like, we couldn't get it going again. Eventually, I had to find a fix where to reinstall Windows or something. Oh, boy. I learned my lesson. One of those situations where... 
you probably only let it happen once. <laughs> yeah. So what, what else were you saying? The... Oh, I was just going to say, yeah. So we got a more authentic Nullarbor experience of just sitting for hours and, you know, I was leaning against you, looking out the window. We were both looking out the window, watching the desert pass us by. Mm, it was pretty good. Or we were passing the desert by. Yes. I don't know things. Perspective. I think that's about all we have time for today. I'm not actually sure what we're speaking about in the next episode, so you'll just have to wait and tune in. I never know. In a fortnight. You could know, though. But I don't want to. It makes it fun. Wait, are you saying this wouldn't be fun for you otherwise? I thought this was a beautiful thing that we do together in our relationship. That's very good acting. I was being dramatical. Yes. In the hope that you would react. I did. I reacted and made you annoyed. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Thank you. You've been listening. To Paisel, a true rom com. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.